The work of the Holy Spirit can be classified in two primary works. It is his work in the believer is related either to his putting us in Christ, which we're going to refer to as the baptism of the Spirit, or his putting Christ into us, which is classified as regeneration. And we're going to look at these two, this twofold division as we're introducing, starting this new study here, on the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament believer. Pastor Tim Holsher, and thank you for joining me as we look at this. We're going to start off in John 14, 20, uh, probably one of my favorite verses in the New Testament because it illustrates this truth so well. But in order for you to see the background of this, I want to go back to verse 16, where Jesus Christ is speaking just to the 11 disciples. Judas has left the room, and he says, I'm going to ask the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may be with you into the age. And he tells us that that helper is the spirit of truth. Now, if we go on down here, he then says in verse 20, in that day, that day being the day that he's going to ask and the Holy Spirit's going to be sent. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. We'll talk about this relationship at another time. But right now, we're looking at what the Holy Spirit does in these two relationships to First of all, put us into Christ and then puts Christ in us so that we're joined in a mutual relationship. Now we can see this pictured if we take the first one, you and me. First of all, we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. It says for in or probably by, I would take this this N preposition to be an in, or that's translated in, I would take it to be a by or by means of. For by means of one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body. So the Holy Spirit took and baptized or put us into Christ. There's no water in this verse. This verse is not about water baptism, though I believe water baptism should picture this. We should let people know that when you're being water baptized, you are picturing your union with Christ and union with the body of Christ. That's, I think, primarily what ought to be understood. But that baptism puts us into Christ, into the one body. Now, the other side of this ministry was I and you, Christ and you. And if we went to John chapter 3 and verse 5, uh, Jesus answered, I tell you the solemn truth, unless a person is born of water and spirit. And I would take spirit here to be a capital S, referring to the Holy Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. But notice a person is born. They're born. And if you notice... I want you to notice this Greek word over here. If you can kind of remember these first letters, it's going to be helpful when we go to Titus chapter 3. And Titus chapter 3 says that he, that is God, saved us not on the basis of works which we have done in righteousness. doesn't just say not works of law, just says even works that are done in righteousness. You, God does not save us because we've done works doesn't make any difference what kind of works there. He doesn't save us because of our works, but according to his mercy, by a washing. And again, this is not a literal washing. It's not a washing with water. He tells us it's a washing that consists of two words, regeneration and renewing. Now, just for quick reference, let's go back to John 3. Look at this Greek word over here and see those those first four letters there. Okay, keep those in mind. Let's go back to Titus 3. And I want you to see this word over here, and you can see these three letters are part of the letters that are associated uh, with with our word that we saw over there. Because over there, um, he says he has to be born. That's a verb. This is a noun form of that. And then it has these beginning letters, which mean again. Palin is again, and then genesia is the process of conception gestation, birth. It kind of looks at the whole thing, all wrapped up into one. doesn't look at the beginning, doesn't look at the end. It just looks at the whole thing. And you're born again, regenerated again, and renewed. And that, notice what he says then here. He says that by or from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the one that produces this in us. Now, if I can make this work here very quickly... I want us. I, I want to illustrate this. Um, I want to illustrate this by um, 
ha- having you think through the illustration, the the um, what we what we call the um, <clears throat> the logo for uh, our website and our and our YouTube page, which is based on John fourteen twenty, and I've used this illustration now for close to thirty years when I'm teaching people about who we are in Christ. That when we're looking at this, let's let this line down here represent the earth, and so we have a person. You and I, a believer in Jesus Christ, and this person, we're down here on earth, Christ is up in heaven. Now that, what looks like an X is a key, it's the letter key, it's the first letter in the title Christos, that we, the title Christ comes from. In John 14, 20, Jesus says that the Spirit's going to do two works. The first work is one in which he is going to put us into Christ. So the first thing that happens is the Holy Spirit puts us in Christ. That work is what the scriptures refer to as baptism, not water baptism. There is a water baptism, but that's not what this. Water baptism puts us in water. This baptism puts us in Christ. Okay, And we saw that in 1 Corinthians 1.13. On the other hand, at the same time that the Holy Spirit puts us in Christ, he also puts us, or puts, excuse me, puts Christ into us. And this word is our fancy word, regeneration. That might be a word that maybe you've never heard before. Um, If you're familiar with scripture, you've probably seen this. Now, Jesus did not use either one of these words in John 14, 20. But when he was talking about you and me, that's this relationship here, you and me, that's the first part of that. And the second part, and I in you, that's this relationship. And so he has put us, the Spirit has put us in Christ and put Christ into us. These are the two relationships that we have. These two relationships that, that the Holy Spirit initiates uh, is part of our salvation. And his other ministries then are going to relate to these Now, I just want to add one other detail. Though we're saying that this is Christ up here, the Spirit, the baptism of Spirit also puts us into the Spirit as well as into the Father. It's those just aren't as pronounced of truth. They're stated just a couple of times each. Um, And the other side of it, the regeneration, that the Spirit is in us as well as the Father is in us. So this work technically relates us to all three persons of the Godhead. Now, on both sides, though Jesus is primarily focusing in John 14, 20 on, on um, uh, his relating us uh, in this context primarily to who we are as believers uh, with respect to him, you and me and I and you. I hope that's helpful. I hope that little illustration was helpful today. And when you look at that, uh, the logo that we have there, that's, that's what this is representing. It's representing reminding us this is who we are. This is who we are in Christ, and this is who we are because Christ is in us. And as we learn these things, they're things that can help us to be settled, stable, as we just concluded a study, quite a long study on that, uh, and to enjoy and appreciate the ministry of the Spirit, and all of that comes together. So as I encourage you every day, makes it possible for us to have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today.